Hello everyone, welcome back to another new video, and today I will be showing you a study where two bishops are trapped on an open board. I know these are for some reason not considered brilliant even after the update, but they are still very instructive. In the following position, white has a rook and a pawn for two bishops, which is generally a draw, but much better for the bishops in other positions with more pieces. But this is an exception because white has the move, including the fact that the two bishops are on the same file. After the great move rook to c6, the bishops are forked, and since they cannot defend each other, the only way to let both bishops escape is to give a check on h3. In the end game the king is best placed closer to the center, which is no exception here because king to f2 takes control of several important dark squares, which is key later. The bishop cannot move to the left as it will allow the fork rook to h6 check, and bishop to g5 allows rook to c5, when after this bishop moves white's rook will fork the king and the other bishop on h3 with rook to h5. Bishop to f4 fails for the same reason after rook to c4, and I know there seem to be counters, but we will get to them later because one drawback with king to f2 is that the bishop on c1 can move to d2. White must now be accurate with how we chase this bishop next. Rook to c2 looks strong, but after the bishop moves to the fifth rank, rook to c5 loses to the pin bishop to b6. You also don't want to chase the bishop on h3 because its presence there is what limits black's options. The correct move is rook to d6, keeping an eye on h6, which in turn keeps the dark squared bishop confined. Bishop to c1 allows rook to d1 then h1, taking down the bishop likely, so black's bishop must move to one of the fated squares on f4 or g5. In the case of f4, you can similarly move the rook to the 4th rank, but as you probably realized, bishop to g5 prevents rook to h4 check. What should you do here? Keep the chase going with the only move that attacks the dark squared bishop, rook to d5. By now the placement of white's king has shown its true value, as it makes the e3 square off limits to black, and after bishop to h4 check. King to f3 prevents bishop to g4 to control h5. With three pieces lined up and no checks, any move black makes will result in a fork or skewer of the bishops, when white's sole pawn left on e2 is enough to win this endgame up an exchange. If you want to see more brilliant chess studies like this be sure to like and subscribe for more, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.